Hello YouTube, Dirty Adventure here. Today we're going to start doing the um, service number three, which occurs at 15,000 kilometers. All right, let's begin with checking our air filter. Uh, I'm gonna use these KTM Power Parts tools. They are great, I absolutely recommend them. This is how I store my license and everything. So, uh, we need to remove these screws here. The air filter is underneath here. So, let's see here. So, we'll take uh, probably this one, H4. Let's see if that fits. H4, exactly. Let's do this. So we will quickly open it up. I usually open bolts in crisscross fang fashion um, from the outside first and then the inside. When we put it back, the torque on these bolts are going to be three nanometers. Okay, here we go. The bolts are off. We are going to look at the air filter. You basically need to press that way, press on these pedals. On, there is one and there is the second one. And you just do it like that. And you hold, hold the air filter like here. And with your finger, literally just press them. All right, so it's off. So you check this side, right? So you look at the side. And in my case, it's fairly clean. There is no dirt that I can see. Maybe just a little bit, just a little bit of dirt. This is considered to be a filter that is still okay. Uh, if you compare it with this side, which is pretty clean, look at the side, see? This is completely clean. And that, is a little bit dirty as you can see see just a little bit but not much there is no point replacing this filter because it's not even it's not even 15 percent used up so pretty good filter okay what else we need to do here is we need to check what's going on there and that's your throttle body see that see that hole over there that's your throttle body and uh we just need to check uh the gaps see that corner over there and that corner over there sometimes the oil is accumulated there so we need to just uh, take a little rag and stick that rag over there beyond this plastic over there and there and just make sure that there's no oil there if there's enough oil there you can see a, lo a lot of oil there so there is a drain actually over here See this you take this out and you remove this black cap out and the oil can drain okay but the reason why oil is there is because um, when you put too much oil excess oil gets blown back onto the oil into the air filter area here and it gets accumulated in those areas over there so if you see all oil there it means you put too much oil it happened to me I didn't know how to properly measure the level of oil and I put a little bit too much. It's not good for the engine, so just be careful. Measure your oil properly. Not Do not put more than 1.7 liters of oil in the engine. Not a drop more. All right, to remove the fuel tank, we have to do the following things. First of all, safety first. So I take some, I took some electrical tape, took off the negative uh, wire and taped it from all sides and also taped uh, the negative uh, battery terminal just in case so that there's no sparks uh, possible, right? Because we're dealing with fuel tank uh, and f some fuel is going to spill just a few drops so we just just in case we need to do that to eliminate the possibility of fire uh, second of all 
in order to remove the the actual fuel tank uh, this bolt here this is 10 millimeter socket and there is a there is a bolt here one and there is two bolts over there one two two three so basically this will remove this part and uh, obviously the same thing on the other side okay so let me start removing those bolts and i'll see you in a sec okay so we remove the bolts the one two three there and this bolt here so how do you take off the this panel here this decorative panel well first of all you go to the front and what you do is you kind of wiggle it towards yourself a little bit and this see this part this part is loose now so that's okay and you kind of go to the back and you'll see that you need to just pull this part towards yourself and there is another holder over there in this area so what you do is you kind of pull it back and a little bit forward so like like so just gonna try to find it here yeah it's actually it's right here right above the the coil um yeah this is the sort of the thing that makes the electricity for the coil. So it's right there somewhere here, yeah. So you kind of use both hands. I have only one hand at the moment, but use your both hands and kind of carefully go like, in this case, you just pull and then this, and, and then you, you hold it here and you pull back. Okay, so you just don't force it. Okay, um, just to show you how it's all connected here. So look, this holder here, see this kind of hook, plastic hook, goes on connected to here. And then this holder here goes into that hole right there. And this one goes into this hole and those two bolts we removed already that's it so it's basically kind of you just pull it you know you just pull it like that and a little bit to the yeah you kind of pull it like that towards yourself okay that's how you remove the panel now another thing what i do throughout this video is I always, always, always put the bolts in there. Um, I screw back the bolts so that I don't lose them. So for example, I take the bolt, it goes in the tank and I just screw it back on. And I do this on purpose because I, I lost some bolts before. So when you remove something, it's a good idea to simply, you know, take the bolt, screw it back in, just like that, so you don't lose them. And I'll do the same thing over there as well. The next thing we need to do is we need to remove this part. And then we need to remove one bolt right there. That's a 12 millimeter socket. And uh, that is H4. So all of these bolts are, um, are H4, H4 bolts, uh, socket. Uh, sorry, not socket, just bolts. Okay, so meet you in a second. Quick note about removing this piece. I actually opened it up and before you open it, make sure you touch a, a tap or a metallic, uh, a metallic object to discharge any kind of static electricity that you have in your body. 
we collect static electricity by just moving in our clothes, you know, kind of um, generate static. So what I usually do, I just go outside and I take a, and I touch a tap, a water tap, you know, and that grounds me. That removes all static electricity from my fingers, from my body. Before you open this, the reason is because there is fumes, uh, uh, gas fumes coming out. And in, in case you have lots of static on you, you can sort of uh, try to touch a bolt and then there is a static discharge and kaboom. Okay, so before when you're dealing with uh, fuel, you always have to think about static electricity as well as um, just normal sparks like from the battery. Okay, so that's another um, precaution. Now, there are six bolts holding it, holding the cap. Three of them purely decorative bolts. They're here. They just hold this this uh, gray part. And then the other bolts actually hold the whole thing together. They're longer. So I usually, like when I remove it, I'll screw in the, the bolts back in so that I don't forget where, which bolt goes where. Okay, so I'll just remove those bolts. All right, just be careful. Don't drop anything into the tank because this whole thing is open now. Okay, so what we do is we literally take it, take this thing, this whole thing, lift it up. That's what's underneath. That's your lock, okay? So what the next thing we're gonna do, you see those metal metal things that hold, the metal holders that hold those two um, hoses? We will press them and remove the hose uh, from the nozzles, okay? Because we need to remove the tank and uh, those hoses are holding it. That's just one part of the hoses. There's another hose that holds it and I'll show you in a second. So after I removed this part, I was able to unhook those hoses and I put everything back in. I didn't tighten the bolts. I just finger screw them back in. And now we have to take care of the 12 millimeter bolt here that's holding the tank. So for that, using a ratchet, 12 mil. You might want to do an extension, like a, a longer extension here, if you like. Uh, just uh, by the way, the reason why I put this cap back on, the fuel cap, is because I don't want the smell of gasoline. And gasoline fumes all over the place. Okay. So now you get it, I just have to unscrew it and meet you on the other side. On the other side, you have to find this guy over there, this this fellow, and uh, just disconnect this part. So I think all you have to do is you kind of lift this up just like that. And then it becomes a pedal, so you press it, and hopefully, yeah, it comes out like that. So this is the main connector, one of the connectors um, that that uh, is, you know, part of the tank. So we'll disconnect it here, and I don't believe there are any anything else here that holds it anymore, except the hoses underneath. So I'm going to try and wiggle it up and see what, what else is holding it. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. There's a bolt here and on the other side as well. So we need to take care of those bolts. All right. So 
after everything is unscrewed and we can lift the tank what we do is we kind of wiggle the tank up and we put um, a towel underneath the fuel pump and the fuel filter if you see that that white part there that's a fuel filter now look at the fuel hose i've just currently disconnected one of the fuel hoses there's the second one there but before you disconnect any fuel hoses the first thing you need to do in order to um, be able to lift this whole thing up you need to disconnect that electrical part see that electrical connector there that's the first thing you need to disconnect so um once you undid the electrical connector there's only one there so you can't miss it you kind of uh you, you'll understand how to disconnect it there is a little pedal there that you have to move towards you and then you push down then you are able to, to do these things so like lifting up the tank properly so this is the connector this is one of the fuel connectors look at how it works it has these pedals on one side and the same pedal on the other side and here's see those pedals they kind of hold the holes together and that's why you need the towel because the fuel leaks a little bit just a few drops anyway uh, so yeah that fuel line goes to this plastic fuel pipe okay and there's a second fuel line over there deep inside there that you need to disconnect and that's about it after that you will be able to lift the tank so to make the work easier to disconnect those fuel lines there is a special tool uh this one it's this kind of pliers that allow you to press those two things like that and pull or press them and to put back these pliers i got on aliexpress you can find them in any hardware store too um i found them to be useful uh, i've removed the tank before and uh after the first time on the first time i didn't have these pliers and uh, i had a lot of trouble like putting my fingers in there and pressing it really hard it, it was a pain so with the pliers it, it just became very very simple to do okay so i'll go ahead and disconnect the second hose and then i will remove the tank and i'll show you so i disconnected the second hose as you can see it's right there that's the pipe so the only thing left is literally just uh free the fuel filter from the metal holder there okay and uh we should be good to go okay so what do we have here now the tank is off um so these are the fuel lines fuel filter this my friends is the computer okay you see this big connector there so the computer is actually underneath uh, underneath there okay we don't need to touch it uh for now there is no need to remove it because um it's actually there is like a metal plate there behind below this computer you can't actually put your hand there anyway so what we need to do is we need to carefully remove this or move it to the side it drips fuel a little bit so there's nothing you can do it will just drip for a while and then stop and then after it stops you just remove this and this is what we see here as you can see uh not much space i mean that's your the head the header there see that's the the um, uh how's it called the spark plug over there all right so you can kind of get to it 
right there. That's the spark plug. So you can you can actually remove the spark plug from here, but it's very inconvenient. All right, so we're finished with the tank. Uh, we're back onto the valve job. So as you can see, there's not a lot of space in the beginning, but I've removed the, um, the tank the rubbers that were holding the tank here. This, I removed the, um, the computer. This is the computer, by the way. It was here, right, like that. So I removed the cover, I put the computer to the side. The computer has this uh, grounding wire that goes in there. Yeah, there is a, basically there is a the grounding hole there with the bolt. So I removed that <clears throat> and I took away, see there's a hose organizer there. So I kind of unplugged um, all the hoses that I think are going to interfere with what we need to do. I also unplugged this plug. I uh, didn't touch the white one because it's not interfering. There's our spark plug over there, as you can see. Over there. Yeah. So, uh, to remove that spark plug, <clears throat> I think we'll do it at the end, but just to show you, if you don't have the 14 socket, a long 14 socket, um, there is this option here too. This is in your uh, uh, KTM tools that came with your bike like these tools over there uh so there is a 13 right the 13 uh wrench and it fits onto the small side here and this big side goes down into that hole right right there so then you use you push it down then you use the 13 uh wrench to turn it and unscrew it. If you need to do that, you can do it in your tool, tool kit. Or if you do it properly, this is the official KTM uh, power parts uh, tool kit. Awesome. And it comes with this 14 socket, a long socket. And you use this long stick extension and you put it in and unscrew it as well. So you can do it both ways. This is obviously much nicer and much easier to use. So if you have that, perfect. So yeah, so what you need to do is uh, in this stage of the game, um, I actually kind of thought about it and I unscrewed the radiator, as you can see. See, it's moving a little bit, so if I need to put my hand in there i can put my hand there i didn't i didn't drain the radiator the hoses are all connected i just unscrew it and screwed it and um, just left it hanging like that um <clears throat> not sure if i need that or not but you know it wasn't a big deal just like four screws or yeah four or five screws to remove it i didn't want to drain the radiator lots of people um online they're basically like draining like un un unplugging the hoses this is by the way a fill plug you will need that unscrew that a couple of times in order to when you fill in uh the radiator with a with a coolant you kind of unscrew this uh bleeder hole to get the air out so you can pour in um all the coolant right away just an, as an aside we don't need to worry about it now just let you letting you know and <clears throat> yeah so it's basically hanging like that and what i used is you know from the same kit i used uh, a ratchet with a cv joint kind of extension that allows you to go in and unscrew those kind of bolts, see? Now, 
actually there is a way to get there from here right there is a way to do it so you don't have to use this but it's just a lot faster you know you can put it there you don't need to bend over and do all kinds of tricks um it's just easier anyway i just lightly unscrewed these just a little bit you know like that so uh, we're off to the races all of the uh, yeah the the valve cover is loose now okay so you can actually you don't need to drop the engine or anything you can actually do this job by just carefully moving the hoses and hooking electrical connectors here and it will give you a decent you know decent um access and frankly here's the radiator there see that so if you need access to that side so if you need to put the fillers in there you can actually um move the radiator slightly and put you know squeeze your hand in there all right so after some probably 20 minutes of wiggling the top of the um the valve top of the header the valve cover i um i was able to take it out without taking the radiator off so the radiator is unscrewed and it's just basically holding on to uh, by by the uh by the actual radiator hoses uh it's completely unscrewed as you can see so how um how was i was able to do it is the the cap goes on like this so the goal is if you go through and you push it down and the, the what prevented me from pushing it down easily is actually this gasket this reusable gasket don't throw it away it's reusable um, i had trouble removing like the gasket was in between the cylinder the head and um and the and the cap and it was interfering with the cap going forward towards the radiator there right so be careful don't rip it apart don't rip the gasket away with full force just carefully wiggle it wiggle it wiggle it and take the gasket out and try to get the gasket outside of its um um of the rails here see the gasket is in and there is a like a special rail for it right so when you take out um uh, this cap the gasket it will interfere so just be careful and uh, how i took it out is you go down a little bit this way and down this way and out like this i did it through this way you could also do it through this way too but uh the clearances are very tight and you would need to really be careful with the radiator so that the hoses don't uh, disconnect but i was able to slowly push it slowly slowly wiggle it down one thing that will not help you it will actually put pain in the ass is this this side here so there's a uh, there's some kind of connector here it's like a, a big electrical connector here and that sucker really messed it up and also there is a frame uh here see that there is there's a frame here over here also prevents you from taking it out but as you can see that hole over there that's how i was able to tilt it down and then that way okay so now um, the cap is off. The uh, the valves are not at top dead top that center. So what you need to do, first of all, take this away, put it in a safe place. Uh, what you need to do <clears throat> is you need to put it put it in six gear by rotating the rear wheel by hand and just put it in sixth gear keep on until you get the sixth gear once you reach the sixth gear you're able to rotate easily rotate the rear wheel and it will actually rotate the uh the engine right so 
what you need to do is you keep on rotating the engine. Just a sec. Um, basically, you kind of rotate it until you see a mark, top dead center mark. Um, alternatively, there is a way you can unscrew this part and use a socket to, to rotate the engine this way too. It's the same thing. All right, so I encounter, encountered one problem. Um, as I was rotating the, the wheel, this thing was rotating, but I, since I have to use two hands to rotate the wheel, um, I wasn't able to see um, the, uh, the marker there. Plus, on top of that, it was really hard to rotate the wheel because I forgot to take out the spark plug. So, because if you leave the spark plug there, it will create a vacuum as you rotate the cylinder. And uh, it's going to be very hard to rotate rot the, 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 basically to move the cylinder up and down because it will create a lot of, a lot of vacuum, a lot of pressure there. So remove the, uh, I removed the, uh, I had to remove the uh, spark plug. This is how it looks like. It has this kind of plastic holder. There's something here, probably grease of some sort on the end. And if by the look of it, it's, oh, let's see here, uh, it is in good shape. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just, um, it's a bit whitish. So that would, uh, that would, that would tell me that it's lean, it's burning lean. So the temperature is very high, but I'm not an expert. I'm not a mechanic. So um, you'll be the judge. Let me know in the comments what you think about the spark plug. Is it okay or not? Um, looks okay to me. But I will replace it anyway. Uh, so as soon as I uh, as soon as I find the top dead center, I'll just place lightly screw in this this one back. Um, uh, just uh, so that nothing falls into the into the cylinder you never know um, yeah so that's the trick you have to take out the spark plug before you start rotating uh, either through this or rotating uh, the, the wheel in the sixth gear another thing if you're looking for a tool that would fit here that's pretty big uh, hex S uh, hex socket here so you can use this tool. This is a spark plug tool that is included inside your um, uh, KTM tool, tool kit with the bike. So this is how it looks like. Just stick it in there like that and you can rotate and you can actually put some put some um, um, I don't know, uh, I'm like a, a screwdriver through here and that will be able to give you more leverage and you can spin it, spin it and uh, open this thing. And then there is a socket that you can use to rotate the engine more easily through here. So this is optional. You can either use the wheel or this. I'm going to try to use this because uh, the wheel is a bit annoying. So I'm going to use this now. All right, guys. So after about two hours of trial and error, I figured that um, it's not that simple. So what you need to do is to make sure that when you align the top that center over there, there is a line there. You have to make sure that those knuckles are up. You're facing up. Do you see those knuckles? These ones? They're facing up because you can, so basically this is facing up. And then if you look, if you look at this, and it's not only that the lines are aligned, those, those lines. Yeah, those ones. 
that it says I N L H and E X E X L H, I guess. And you see that T? Should be able to see that T. Um, yeah, there's a T on the side as well. And then I N L H and uh, L X uh, E E X whatever L H I guess exhaust. Those are lined up as well. That line, but most importantly, um, these knuckles they should be facing up. Now you can actually, and I did it. Actually, I made a mistake. I it was the line was there. And these guys were aligned, but I didn't see the letter T. And these knuckles went down. Each of them went a face down. So don't make the same mistake as me. Um, don't waste two hours. And basically make sure that those knuckles are facing up. Then you're able to take measurements. If the knuckles are facing down, there's no way for you to measure anything because uh, I've tried and even 0 0.02 millimeter gauge, uh, filler, filler gauge, I guess, doesn't fit. Nothing fits, nothing gets in there. So yeah, just uh, letter T is your guide and the line there is your guide. And those, those lines, those things should be also aligned. I, N, L, H and um exrh it says i think yeah so uh, after that i've been able to take some measurements measurements and all of my four valves are way off so normally exhaust should be between 0 0.15 and 0 0.2 i have 0 0.11 on both and then so they're too tight the exhaust valves are too tight and the intake valves are too tight. See, it's 0 0.1 minimum and to, until 0 0.15 maximum. And I'm, again, too tight, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So I need to take off everything and take, you know, order some shims. So if this is 11, I'm going to take off the cams and, um, I mean, 0 0.11. I'm going to take off the cams and measure the shims, what kind of shims are there. And then I'll be able to understand what, uh, what height of new shim I need for this. But I'm going to try to get to like 0 0.18, I would say 0 0.19 on exhaust and 0 0.14 um on the in the intake okay see you soon after some fiddling around i managed to uh take off the camshaft holder which looks like this that holds the camshaft together there and um and i removed the shims now in order to take to take this part off, you need to first take this part off. So this part goes in there. And that's the part, that's the holder for the spark plug hole to make it taller. So if you don't remove this part first before you do anything else, you cannot get to, you cannot open these bolts here and there on the other side. So I um, so it's very hard to pull it out. So all you have to do is you kind of have to go like this and pull out, not completely straight, but maybe a little bit forward because the engine is tilted slightly forward, right? So you need to go that way, not this way, slightly that way. So essentially what happens is um, I wasn't able to do it by hand. It was very difficult to do it by hand. So I luckily, like you don't want to do a screwdriver there. You don't want to do that. Um, uh, so what I did is I used uh, 
like a bearing puller, like something like that. And I used these things, right? These uh, ends there to grab on, to grab on to this edge here. And I pulled it out. Um, it took me like five minutes. Um, so don't rush yourself. Just uh, carefully, you know, hook it up from one side and pull a little bit and wiggle and then hook it up from that side and pull, pull and wiggle, hook it up from this side and also wiggle. So you kind of have to just do it slowly, slowly, slowly like this. And it comes out. Um, another thing. Um, yeah, so basically after you remove that, you're able to start un um, unbolting everything. So you have to remember that you, uh, uh, you start removing from outside in, you're removing the bolts from outside in. So you basically unscrew this one, unscrew that one, unscrew this one, unscrew that one, right? Now, to reach them, uh, I used, um, I just put the ratchet from from this side, right? It's easier. Uh, to reach these, I had to have an extension on the ratchet. So, you know, it comes out here, right? So you need to use an extension here, okay? Ah, okay, I for almost forgot. So before you do anything here, before you remove the camshaft holder, um, you actually need to, you need to remove the, um, uh, the cam chain tensioner first. So remember, do this first before you unscrew anything there. So the trick with this is, and I also, um, I wasn't able to do it at first, is because that bolt, is so close to this part that you need a special uh, wrench and it's called offset wrench. Um, offset wrench. It's, um, it's an eight, eight millimeter like that. That can reach that bolt and that can reach this bolt too. I guess a normal wrench, eight millimeter wrench will work too. But see, this part will not allow you to will not allow you to put a wrench, a regular wrench, properly. So you would need to tilt it slightly, and that can strip the bolt. So the proper way to do it is to use this offset wrench, eight millimeter. Okay. So I didn't have the eight millimeter offset wrench. I had to borrow it from my friend. Okay, now I was careful enough when you, uh, so first, before you unscrew these bolts, you kind of unscrew the, let me show you. So you unscrew, it was ho holding like this. So you unscrew this bolt and inside you have like a little screw deep inside and you turn it clockwise to lock to lock the cam chain. And then you start removing the bolt, the two bolts on the sides. Okay, not sure why. This is what the manual says. Okay, so yeah, and I was able to remove it without destroying the, you know, the, 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 um, oh, shoot, uh, this, the blue thing there, the, um, Gasket, yeah. So people saying that it's easy to destroy the gasket. I was able to remove it without touching, like destroying the gasket, which is a good thing. I do have an extra gasket. I bought it before, just in case I rip this one apart. So I'll reuse the gasket. Uh, yes, yeah, so do that. And then you start removing the plastic from here, like I said. Then you start doing one outside 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 and then you do 
inside, 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 inside. Or you can do inside, 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 inside. I'll do this, the Kamchan, because there's a tensioner here. There's a black tensioner here. So I'll say inside, 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 inside. Okay? That will allow you to lift those camshafts just like that. Now, they are zip tied here. See? There's a zip tie. And on the other one, too. And I put an extra zip tie um, here. This one. Um, so basically you can't go wrong, even if you remove the, so what I did is I kind of did this, I lifted, wiggled that, kind of lifted it like that, he, see, and you have these two, two little holders here, can I lift them, and the shim is in there. That's actually a valve right there. The shim is in that hole, little hole there. So you, I use a magnet. Magnet like that. Use the magnet to take out the shim. And uh, so that the shim, it's very easy to lose the shim. If you do it with your hands, it's hard to grab onto. So you need a magnet. And then you remove it and I just, you put this back and carefully just put this back like it was before. You can't go wrong with this because it's zip tied, right? So if you're, let's see here. So, yeah, you can't go wrong. Okay, that's it. So, um, Cover this up so that nothing falls in there. Okay. And then I put my valve clearances. Uh, so I put the old shim measure the old shim using the micrometer right and I did some calculation what my goal is 19 here see the maximum 0 2 I wanted 19 as my goal this is maximum 15 I wanted 14 as my goal and then I measured all the shims and I know that um, so the shim here is let's say 236 2 millimeters point uh, thirty six. So uh, the gap is 0 0.6, but I need to get it to 14. So I need to have a, uh, so basically 14 minus six is eight, right? So I need to have a sm uh, um, point, 0 0.8, um, millimeters shorter shim so I had uh, 236 the old shim so the new shim should be 228 or 230 if uh, because uh, shims it's very hard to find shims exactly 228 most of them go like 230 so if I put 230 I'll get 0 0.12 which is still which is still acceptable right Ideally, it should be 0 0.14 because you want to always, um, it's better to have looser gaps than tighter gaps. So 0 0.12 is still, is still within range, right? 0 0.1 to 15. So that's okay. It's going to be okay. So if I find a shim, uh, 0, so 230, I'll be happy. Yes, so that's it. So I'm going to be very careful with this. And then I'll um, have to find... Sometimes there are dealers or mechanics, private mechanics. They have a shim exchange program. So you kind of give them your shims and they will give you the ones you need. 
And if enough people do that, then there's always shims that people can get. I don't know. I need to figure out where that, you know, call a few places. Call the dealership and ask if dealers, if, if the dealer I bought the bike from will do it for me. Will give me the shims, the proper ones, if I exchange them. So I need to make some phone calls to find out where to get them. In the, in you know, if you cannot get, if you cannot find a shim exchange, then a program, uh, then um, uh, you know, Google it. Maybe there is some kind of program in some sort of uh, groups, you know, local groups. Um, but you can always order them. You order them from the from the dealer. I think they're like five bucks each or something like that. I don't know exactly. So you can order them, uh, order online. You get your shims, okay? And then installation, you put the shims in, in the proper places. And then you just, uh, when you put this back, this one back, you need to go and tighten. You need to tighten the inside out. So you tighten these and then you tighten these, right? So it's going to be one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, something like that. So five, six, seven, eight, crisscross. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. Okay. And you put the plastic holder in there and there way you go. So. I'll get, I uh, need to wait a few days until I get the shims and then we'll continue then. Alrighty. So, um, I managed to get new shims, um, from the local dealership and I've installed them, uh, very carefully. You have to be very careful with installing the new shims because you can't really use a magnet. So you have to use, take your time and use your fingers without the glove take the glove off because you need to feel the shim it it uh, fits its socket fairly with low tolerance like there is no gap there so you need to make sure you you insert it properly with your fingers um the zip uh, zip tie trick did not work on 390 adventure uh, meaning I zip tied the chain, the camshaft chain to the camshaft in hopes that uh, I won't be, you know, moving the, the camshaft. So, uh, so the chain of the camshaft sprocket. But um, when I reinstalled everything with those zip ties, I could not get the, um, the lines to align, you know, those... Uh, the lines over there, those lines. No matter what I tried, you know, I've tried, you know, playing with the tensioner, nothing. So I actually had to screw everything back in, check the position um, of the of the cam shafts, you know, if the lines align, and then install, literally install the tensioner. As soon as you put the tension back in, so basically you kind of release it that way so this way you you rotate several times and you this way you lock it and then once you install everything you screw it back the chain the cam holder um, you kind of go here and unlock just rotate slightly that way and the spring will tighten the chain again um, as soon as when you what happens is when you tighten the chain this sprocket actually moves back a little bit, right? It makes sense because if you push here, the chain goes here. Literally, not that sprocket, but this sprocket slightly moves backwards. So I had to literally open it up again, unscrew everything again, and move it by hand to remove the zip ties and move it one chain link this way. And then I was able to kind of um, uh, align the lines there. 
And yeah, I, I actually had to do it like literally put everything back and remove everything again for probably three times, three or four times. But this is, it's a kind of, um, and I ended up removing the zip ties because I actually had to move both cams until I got to the, you know, to the, to the lines alignment. And, um, and I checked the gaps again. So don't put this cap, um, right away. Even if the lines align, rotate the motor a few times this way and get to top that center again. And then recheck the, the shims, recheck the valve play, valve gaps. In my case, everything was okay. I'm somewhere in the middle, you know, within the spec. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I, you know, as soon as I was happy with everything in lining, aligning, I double checked the, you know, the line there, make sure that the line there is also matches. And then I put carefully put some silicone in this area here. These one, you see that blue silicone there? So I put a little bit of silicone goes when like that, uh, just along the curves here and just on the sides there as well. Um, I'll show you what I used. I used this guy. RTV, 100% silicone, gasket maker and sealant. Um, now, uh, in the, like when I first started, I actually rem had to remove the whole tensioner for the first time. And then I realized that I don't need to remove the whole tensioner. I just need to lock the tensioner this way when I want to release the chain and then rotate it that way and then release the spring to tighten the chain. So I ended up keeping this guy inside. Uh, without unscrewing these two bolts. These two bolts are a pain in the ass. So, yeah, a tip for you to save time. You don't really need to remove the whole ten uh, tensioner. You just need to unscrew this bolt. And then there is a screwdriver. There is literally a screw deep inside, okay? Uh, with a flat screwdriver, you need to go in and there is a flat screw that you need to rotate several rotations until you've hit the wall. When you hit the wall, don't force it. It just means that you locked the, um, the spring in one position with the chain loose. That's all you need, really. Not sure why in the manual they said to remove the whole bloody thing every time. This is silly. In any case, um, the silicone, once you apply the silicone, um, I had some trouble with uh, making sure that the gasket I'm reusing the gasket, you know, I, um, I I have a spare just in case, but I'm reusing this gasket because it's multi-use. I had trouble with making sure that from all sides, the gasket fits neatly everywhere uh, around the, the cap. So I had to spend some time with that as well. So don't rush it. You have to make sure you have no gaps because if you have a gap, oil will start leaking out of there. And it's, you have to remove the gas tank again, and it's a pain, it's a pain in the butt. Um, now, once you apply the silicone, um, you hand tighten these cover, cover screws. Um, obviously, you put the spark plug in the new spark plug. You have to buy a new spark plug every 15,000 kilometers. I put the new spark plug in and tighten it to 15 nanometers. Um, uh, these guys, these bolts, you basically hand tight, only hand tighten and let for one hour, you have to let the silicone harden. Once the silk for one hour, once the silicone is hardened, you go ahead and torque it to, to uh, 12 nanometers, crisscross pattern, right? So these bolts, 12 nanometers. The spark plug is 15 nanometers. Um, this bolt here, when you tighten everything back in, this bolt is six nanometers. These bolts are 
12, I believe. Yeah, these bolts are 12 millimeters. Now, this bolt, I was able to use the torque wrench. For this bolt, there is no freaking way to get the torque wrench in there. So, I used my hand, you know. Basically, I just used the offset spanner and uh, just kind of by feel, right? I didn't push too hard because I don't want to, you know, lose the thread because this is aluminum block. If you over tight, do not over tighten these or any other bolt because aluminum blocks are weak and it's really easy to, to um, ruin this thread. Okay, so I kind of judged how much I tighten this and then I try to mimic with my hand here. Um, the bolts inside, the inside the cap, the bolts that hold the cam holder, those are 10 nanometers each. And you have to tighten them inside out and remove them outside in. So you kind of do crisscross there's four bolts inside and four bolts on the perimeter. So you go crisscross four bolts to 10 nanometers while the other perimeter bolts are kind of hand tight. And then once the inside bolts are crisscrossed to 10 nanometers, you go ahead and do the, the perimeter ones. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm waiting until the silicon dries, then I'm gonna apply the full torque on these and uh, I will have to reassemble everything back. Um, that means putting the radiator, you know, screwing back the radiator and everything around the radiator, connecting, you know, simply putting the computer back on connecting the, uh, not forgetting the negative that goes here somewhere. And then, you know, I've disconnected a few connections here. The, this one is a fuel injector. So yeah, you have to connect the fuel injector. I've loosened some of the hoses here as well. So I'm gonna put everything back the way it was. But yeah, it's uh, it turned out to be <sighs> it turned out to be a like a three day affair, and it's not not over yet. So I still have to spend a few hours reassembling everything back in. So if you calculate the time, um, and let's say if you if your time is let's say eighty bucks an hour, you know, reasonable. 60 to 80 bucks an hour, just like a mechanic. Um, then it comes down to the same 500, 600, 800 dollars that the dealership takes. The only, I guess the only benefit when you do it yourself is besides the satisfaction that you accomplish something fairly dangerous and complicated, um, is basically that if you have if you know what to do, like next time, it will take me only four hours, right? Once I know what to do, I now I'm comfortable with doing this. I know exactly what needs to be done. Uh, it's going to take me four hours next time, four or five hours. That's good because, um, because yeah, um, you know, it's not going to cost as much next time. Second, really, I had the time, like I did it after work. So I had the time, and, you know, I, I saved about $800. I, I got a quote in Canada. The dealership wanted $800 for this job. And I found mechanics, private mechanics, who wanted $500 for this job, which is which are reasonable amounts, actually. If you think about it, um, I saved the five hundred dollars, and uh, well, I spent a bunch of time. But would I do it again? I think on this bike, 
I'll probably go to a private mechanic and give him, I'll give him, you know, 500 bucks. I would not do this again on this bike. There's other bikes uh, are much easier to work with, but this one, you have to, you have to disconnect so much stuff and you have to have exact tool, tools and silicone and like it's not it's not for the faint of heart so uh yeah okay i will reconnect everything back put everything back and then um, i will show you uh the final final result let's hope it starts see you soon but before we go any further this is the perfect time for us to step back and complete another step before we jump into the into the uh, you know spark plugs and removing the 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 cap the header. I wanted to show you something. So note that this tank is now off and it's super easy to uh, clean it now. See, there's lots of dirt underneath. So it's a good idea to take it, take um, a cloth with some water and just gently make sure it's all clean. And after it's all clean, uh, what you need to do is you dry it. And then after it's completely dry, you apply this thing onto it. This is called Jet Seal Matte. It's a sealant and matte uh, and paint protectant of chemical guys so this is great stuff um you apply it once you don't need to put a thick coat just a thin coat this will do um you apply it once a year and it basically protects the paint uh from the sun uh, uv rays and things like that uh and it uh it ma makes it look like new it's it's amazing i've even restored old you know old uh, matte painted tanks with this thing and it restores the old matte paint makes it look new and it stays it doesn't go away even if you wash uh the bike it will still keep that color because it, it keep that kind of uh polish on it it's um it's like um a bit like a like a wax but for matte paint so matte paint cannot have a, um, a wax never try to wax a matte paint you'll, you'll ruin it and also you don't polish matte paint so matte paint is very 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 hard to deal with in general so that's the kind of thing you need to apply to it that's the best you can you can do for for your matte painted surfaces so i will clean the tank and i will apply this thing and then we'll be done with the tank and uh, we'll come back to our main um, feature presentation, which is basically removing the spark plug and opening the head and doing the valves. All right, guys, so I put the fuel tank on. Uh, these are tightened to, uh, I put them to five Newton meters. Uh, also a quick apology, I called um, the, the measure of torque as Newton meters, not nanometers. I was using the term nanometers before. Um, so yeah, it's Newton meters. So five Newton meters, 20 Newton meters for this main bolt. Uh, I put five Newton meters on these ones and five Newton meters for these ones. This is according to spec. So 20 nanometers, sorry, Newton meters according to the manual. And this is also five according to the manual. So I put the battery back on as the last step. I'm going to put this in neutral. Uh -huh. So this is neutral. Perfect. All right. So let's see here. Here goes nothing. Okay. So I'll need to reset the time and everything. Everything has been reset. Okay. Okay, that's it goes nothing. Starter doesn't work. 
Interesting. I pressed the start button. It's not working. I got to check what this is. Okay, it turned out everything is okay. Um, luckily, it was a silly mistake. Um, so basically, when you turn this on, just make sure that it's a neutral here because it was sometimes when you switch the gears, you don't see the N. Um, so you just, uh, I just wiggled this shifter. And w as soon as I saw the N, then I was able to start it easily. And it sounds different. It sounds a bit smoother. Um, yeah, let's see. I'll try it again. So here we go. Okay, and fuel tank is charged now. And let's see, let's just hear the sound. Wow, it just turned over so smoothly. Yeah, different sound. Different sound, completely different sound. Much much smoother i'm happy there's, there's a bit of um oil spill on the uh um on the exhaust pipe there so that's smoking a little bit uh but yeah it looks like um the shims are working fine everything's okay i think it's time to go to step two and change the oil uh, I left the, you know, I didn't want to change the oil before I do the valves because you need, if, if you turn on the, uh, turn the engine over, you need some lubrication there. So I left the old oil in there and now I've tested everything. Everything's okay. Everything's working so I can relax now and go ahead and start changing the oil. Uh, that's about it for changing the valves, uh, the valve, you know, fixing the valve gaps. Okay, in summary, I just want to say a few, a few lessons on top, of, on top of what I already covered. First of all, if you have any comments, please do comment, like, like and subscribe. Um, so comment number one, judging by the pretty terrible, um, out of, you know, pretty terrible situation with the gaps that I had, um, it looks like the valve, the valve gaps, uh, need to be valve play need to be checked, not every 15,000, but every seven and a half thousand. So basically on these bikes, um, it's best to check the valve timing, um, every service. So it doesn't mean that you need to replace the shims or anything. You just need to check on them because uh it looked to me that uh the valve the valves were not adjusted um at the dealership uh on the first service so the, the they were all too um too stiff too um tight and pretty badly you know by 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 a long long margin so you need i will like i know for myself i will check them I'll do a check, um, which is not that bad. You just need to lift the, lift the tank to check them and open the cover. You don't need to actually adjust anything. So just to check is, is I can do that. But yeah, it's going to be every service now on these bikes. Um, so Duke 390 has the same engine. So yeah, they require a frequent valve check. Checks every service. In conclusion... I want to say the following several points. Number one, it can be done at home. Number two, 
you should not be afraid to try it uh, and do it. It's really not that complicated. If you follow step-by-step -step procedure that is in your repair manual, okay? It's not inside user manual. There's two kind of documents. There's a user manual that you download from KTM website for free. Uh, or it's a, it's a little, little booklet that comes with your bike. That's not what I'm talking about. You need a repair manual for the bike. Um, the procedure is similar in a, in a Duke. So you can use Duke's, um, you know, repair manual if you have it. But I got, I bought uh, an adventure, you know, 390 adventure repair manual. And I followed that. So you should definitely purchase it. I think it's like $30, $35. And uh, just follow the guide there. It's very, very straightforward. Um, now that I know how to do this, it should take me about three to four hours next time. Um, so I'm going to do it, like I said, uh, you have to do it every single service. You have to check your valve, um, uh, you, you know, spacing or your valve play. It's not enough to do it once in 50,000 km 15,000 kilometers you need to do it every single service because those valves do go out of alignment and for marketing reasons probably um not a specialist I, I'm not affiliated with KTM in any way I just think that these engines require a, a little bit uh, you know uh, more frequent valve checks valve uh, valve gap checks checks um yeah uh you you know like i said before you should do it i personally had fun doing this i like ranching um i saved uh i think i was quoted 800 dollars at the dealership to do this uh mind you it was combined with the full service you know like whatever they do for the, for the service of the bike like oiling the chain and stuff like that i can do it all at home um they do have a computer that they connect and i found a way i'll make a separate video for that i find i found a way how to connect a bluetooth dongle you know e ebay bluetooth dongle and read out the error codes if you have any you know uh, error codes there in the computer the the error codes are mostly uh going to be like emissions related um anyway i i know how to i'll seg make a separate video for the error codes reading um uh, i suggest you to do this to do this uh valve check yourself so that you're not afraid of it um and save some money and have fun at the same time thanks guys please like and subscribe please do comment if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer all the questions thanks